For part two, I'll be taking the body I made in the first video and refining it a little before making an injection mold and then casting some layers out of soft plastic and also giving them a bit of a test. So at the end of the last video, the blank body I made from balsa, I coated with some epoxy resin and superficially it looks okay and I could probably take this and cast a mold from it and make some layers that would be perfectly acceptable. But with a bit of a closer look, I can see there's quite a number of faults on it. I've got a few little bubbles on the tail. There's a bit of a bulge along the back. And also I can feel a bit of roughness along this front edge and see a few ripples in that epoxy. But the advantage of that is I've got a thickness of material that I can sand back through and that's really what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out with some 300 grit paper that I've stuck to the sanding blocks that I made in the last video. The process I'm using is often called flattening out which sounds a bit daft as the body doesn't really have any flat surfaces. As I pass the rigid sanding block over the surface, it should knock off any high spots and also reveal any low spots as they'll remain shiny and untouched. So to flatten the surface, I need to bring everything to a kind of uniform dullness. So I've flattened out the body and got the shape that I wanted. Now what I need to do is get the shine back. So I'm using wet and dry paper, starting out with 400, and I'm gonna take that all the way through to 2000 grit. As a precaution, I'm also gonna clean down the body between changes of paper to stop grit from one paper contaminating the next. And then to give me that final shine, I'm gonna use some plastic car polish with a rag and really buff it up. To get the layer body ready for moulding, I cheated a little and used a car buffing pad with an electric drill to really bring out the shine. To fill the air pocket in the tail, I melted in some wax and then wiped it flush. The face details, I'm really going to leave for this mould and come back to it once I'm sure the thing's going to swim. I'm making a basic injection mould and to give me an inlet, I'm cutting down some 22mm copper tube to about 15 mil in length. I need to reduce this down to where it meets the layer, so I'm gluing it to a sheet of 6 mil hardwood. I can then saw the material flush to the pipe, just leaving a small piece extending from the front, which I'll square off. It also needs a touch more sanding to clean up. On the front, I'm drilling out for a pin, which again, I've cut the head off. This is for reinforcement and I'm also drilling a small hole on the back of the paddle to accept it. Then I can bring the two pieces together with a bit of super glue. For the other end, I've cut a piece of broom pole at the angle to match the front of the layer body. And with another pin added, it can be just glued into place. On the back of this, I've also drilled a hole so I can friction fit it onto a disco ball motor. This is from a rig I normally use for applying epoxy finishes to the layers. But on this occasion, I'm using it to lay down some silicon. I'm using a two-part RTV silicon and I'm measuring out a very small 10 gram batch, which I need to add just one gram of catalyst to. Once mixed, I can almost just lump it on. I'm not looking to get an even coat. If anything, I want to slightly overload it as the excess will want to run off. But to do that, it'll have to fight that slow rotation. And in the process, it'll stretch and pop any bubbles trapped in the silicon. This motor runs at about one and a half RPM. I can leave this for about an hour and then just repeat that process to build up another layer. 
For the mold box, I'm using strips I've cut from some one millimeter styrene sheet. And to make a star, I'm gluing in a piece of six mil balsa with some super glue as a prop. Then I can position the body and glue the inlet down. To assemble the rest of the box, I'm adding some gaffer tape and then I can tack the pieces together with some more super glue as I go. To prevent any leaks, I can cover the whole box with gaffer tape as well. To help me pour the silicon in, I'm making a little channel which I can tape to the top. I've sized the box to give me a minimum 15mm gap between the edge of the body and the walls. Making a guess at 350 grams of silicon, I can measure and mix up another batch and then pour. The channel's there to make the silicon travel and again while it's doing that it's going to stretch and hopefully pop some bubbles. It turned out I'd underestimated the silicon by about 100 grams. With the silicon cured I can mark an approximate midline on the back. And then with a blade from a craft knife I'm making shallow zigzags through the silicon. This is to provide a key to help the mould lock back together. To make a seam line I'm straightening out the cut as I delve deeper into the silicon to find the body. This is the really important bit. I want to try and run down the centre of the back but also avoid marking the body as I cut. I only need to cut one side and then I can slip the body out and it's virtually ready to use. So to make the mould usable I've cut down a couple of bits of thin plywood to act as reinforcement to kind of backing. I can just slide these into place and then add a couple of elastic bands just to hold it together. I've actually drilled a hole in one of the pieces of backing and I'm going to slide in a copper elbow. This is 22 mil, it's a, obviously a plumbing fitting. To that I need to add a little piece of copper pipe and this just slips in basically. Ordinarily these would be soldered together in use. And then for the top I've got a short piece of plastic pipe and that's going to act as a, a riser. To push the soft plastic through I've got a little plunger that I've made from a dowel with a tap washer screw to the end. And this doesn't make an airtight seal but it should be enough to push the plastic while releasing the air. The soft plastic comes in liquid form and it will settle out if left to stand so it needs shaking or mixing before use. To heat it I'm using a microwave and giving it short blasts on full power of about a minute and then stirring to prevent burn spots. After a couple of blasts it should turn into almost a gel and again it's stirred and another blast in the microwave until it returns to a clear liquid. At this stage I can add a few drops of colour. This is a pearlized light green and just needs stirring in. Then it's back in the microwave for a couple of shorter blasts of maybe 20 seconds a piece just to get rid of any bubbles. To fill the mould I can start by pouring the plastic into the copper until it gets near to the top. Then it's just add the plunger and slowly press down. I don't need to use any great pressure or speed but if I take the plunger down to the elbow it should push the plastic out of the top of the mould and fill the riser. The riser acts like a reservoir and when the plastic inside the mould cools it shrinks and pulls material from here. After a few minutes the body should be cool enough to take out of the mould and I can snip through the plastic behind the tail to free it. Then I can just trim it up and drop it in some cool water to bring the temperature down. Any bits of soft plastic left in the pipes can be cleaned out and kept to be remelted. And then it's put the mould back together and just repeat. To test it I took it down to a small stream with a camera rig I made a couple of videos back 
to see how it performed underwater. It behaved really how I expected it, the body ran true, with the action mainly limited to the tail. If anything, that tail could do with being a bit bigger to ramp up the action at slow speed. But that's something I can look at when I add the face and other details. I did take it on another trip in search of some fish, but that's a story for another day. <laughs>